space chumps. Now, I get a lot of questions about what art supplies I use. So today I am going to show you my top five. No, six. No, five. No, six. It's Jules here making another drawing and publishing video. Now, if you are in the process of making your first children's book, then we are going to be chums. I've been making picture books for about the last decade and I've managed to whittle down exactly how I want to create them. I do like to try new things, so by no means are these things the only things that I ever use. In fact, my first book, Vincent and the Vampires, used a technique that was effective but so perilous that I have never used it again. I'll tell you about that during the video. The first thing I'm going to talk about is paper. So I use watercolour paper for doing my watercolour pain painting. This one is the Dela Rowney, which I use quite a lot, Aquafine, and the most important thing is it is smooth, hot pressed. So you get three different types of watercolour paper. You get hot pressed, cold pressed, or sometimes called not, and you get rough. I like to use the smooth because when I'm using my fine liner pens or pigment liners they work much better on this paper and you don't get that sort of rough texture. So this one is done on rough paper so I don't know if you can hopefully you can see that this is this is the um, ink tense pencils that I've been using on rough paper and there's lots of little divots and lumps and bumps in this paper so they it picks up the paint differently. So I like to use this one, this smooth paper, because as I say, nice and smooth. You probably won't be able to pick that up on the screen, but it's there's just I just cannot feel anything other than a smooth sheet of paper. This is a four size, you can get bigger ones if you're doing a bigger piece of art and I like to use this 140 pound or 300 grams a square meter weight. It's nice and thick. You don't want to get one that's too thin because when you start painting it and you get lots of water on it, it buckles really easily. Next, I want to talk about brushes. So you're going to need some watercolour brushes if you're doing watercolour painting or ink painting. These are no good really for doing acrylics or oils or anything like that. They come in different end shapes. So you can see there are flat square ones. There are tapered ones that are fairly flat as well in terms of their depth. There are round tapered ones and there are ones that are just frankly a bit strange and I've never used this. I inherited a lot of my brushes from my dad and this one I think he probably used for sky or buildings or something because we painted in a very different way. He was much more of a landscape painter so this would have been useful for him. I've never used that brush. The brushes that I tend to use are these tapered ones, round tapered, and I find them useful because you can get really good detail with the tapered end bit and you can also use it to flatten it out a bit to use for a larger area of wash. These are the ones that I use the most, they are round and tapered, and some of them, the smaller ones, are a bit flatter on the end but that's okay because once you dip it into some paint or water it does actually make that tapered end. They're all different sizes and different makes. I've got Pro Art, Pro Lean which are, um, I tend to buy the ones that are synthetic because you get other ones that are made from squirrel or badger tails and stuff like that and I don't, I don't really like that. So I tend to stick to the synthetic ones and this one is a De La Rowney graduate size one uh, but I do have here we go here it is again inherited from my dad a round Kalinsky sable by Windsor and Newton and sable means it's come from an animal I believe it comes from a squirrel so I wouldn't have bought this but I have inherited it so I do sometimes use it I have busted out the marker paper because I want to show you my favourite 
pigment markers. Really popular ones, if you're looking at art videos, are the Pigma Microns. So I bought some of these. The ones that I can get locally are the Staedtler pigment liners. So I started off with these ones and bought these ones to, to try them out. So let's have a look at the 0 0.8s, which is the th thickest ones that you can get. Pretty much the thickest ones. I think you can get slightly thicker, but let's have a look at these. So this is the Staedtler. It's really nice and black and very smooth to lay down onto the paper. Let's give him some ears. And then this is the Micron. Let's see how that one goes. Now this one just feels a bit juddery when I'm using it. I don't know quite how to explain it. It's, it just feels like I'm dragging the ink and it's, it just doesn't want to come out. Whereas with this one, it just felt so easy. So this one is the pigma size side, all right? And this one is the Staedtler. I did wonder at one point whether it was just that that's I was used to using Staedtler and that's why I preferred it but in retrospect I don't think it is that I think it's because that is the better pen so let's try the 0 0.1 and this is the one where you can get a lot more detail so let's try and give our little chap some details I've got to say I think this one this actual pen I've had it quite a long time and the nib on the, uh, that little felt bit is really worn out so I think I need to get a new 0 0.1 but it still feels really smooth and it's really easy to get some good detail in let's give him some bushy eyebrows there we go a bit more hair that's the 0 0.1. Let's try the Pigma. This one I've barely used. The filtered end bit is in much better condition. And it's nice and black. You can get some good details. But just as with the larger size pen, just feels like I'm dragging it out of bed. You know, it's like a naughty teenager after a busy night. It just doesn't feel as beautiful as the Staedtler does. So I'm going to stick to the Staedtler. I prefer, I prefer these ones, but I am going to get myself a new 0 0.1 because that one is almost had it. What about this perilous technique that I used for Vincent and the Vampires? Each of these elements were painted individually on separate pieces of paper and cut out using a scalpel. That means that the, the sky in the background was painted all in one colour on one page. And that tree branch that you can see that goes from one side of the picture to the other, that was painted on another sheet of paper. And the little bats and Vincent who's hanging off the tree branch, they were separate too. After they were painted and dried, I cut round them with a scalpel so that I could get really good details and also leave a little bit of white edging to them. And I did really like the way it looked and this, this technique. What I hadn't factored in was the effect that it was going to have on my poor fingers. My middle finger, where the scalpel was resting, was dented for months. And at the end of the day, after painting tens or maybe even 50 or more little individual pieces of artwork and then cutting them out, my fingers and my hands were really aching. And yes, I could have done it on Photoshop and used the cutout tool on Photoshop, but I wanted to do it old school and make it look a bit more crafty and authentic. 
Now I've done it once and I have to say I will never do it again because of the effect it had on my hands but it was well worth trying out. A lot of the time these days when I am doing a drawing though I use these pens which I actually bought when I was started doing bullet journaling. These are very popular pens for people to use for calligraphy and that sort of thing. These are Tombow Fudanosuke pens. I've got the soft tip which is the black one and the blue one is the hard tip. So let's have a look and see what the soft tip can do. It's great, it is good for doing lettering that sort of thing because when you press hard you can get a really thick line and then less pressure gives you that thin line T for Tombow. But when I'm drawing with it, there is just a little bit less control because the thin isn't quite as thin as the hard tipped. Although I do still use it sometimes for drawing. So that's the soft. But the hard tip, you can still get that thin and thick line, but the thin is thinner. And sometimes that's what you need when you are drawing thin lines. Let's see if we can get a little bit more detail in with this, this chap. Let's give him some really bushy eyebrows. Bags under his eyes. Little skinny ears. And maybe even... Let's give him a t-shirt. So this is my pen of choice. It's the Fudanosuke hard tipped brush pen. Now let's talk about paint baby. Okay that was a very old 1980s reference there. Comment if you get it. These are the pens that I won from a competition that I took part in when I was a student and I have fairly recently just bought some new pans. These, these are called pans when they come in this little plastic jobby. And you can tell if they are professional artist quality by just pressing them. If they give a little bit, then they are just pigment. If they feel quite hard, it means they've got some gum in them and they are student quality. But student quality ones are absolutely fine to start with. So I wouldn't be at all sniffy about those. I do have some um, student quality paints. They're a lot cheaper. These are Windsor and Newton, which you can see in this tin. And I really like the Windsor and Newton ones. So I've got quite a good little set there. The other sort of paint that you can buy are in these tubes. And I, for probably two decades, I only ever used the pans. But I've just started really enjoying using these tubes and I've got different different sorts. I've got the, the Windsor & Newton Cotman. I have also got Windsor & Newton Artists Quality which is the more expensive ones and I've even got some of these De La Rowney Aquafine watercolours. So there are lots to choose from. The difference is that the colour in this is so much more vivid and the saturation level is huge compared to using pans. They are, you don't, you don't need to use very much water with them and you can get a really thick amount of paint. Of course, if you want to use the color of the paper, then using the pans is probably a bit better. But I love both of these and I can, as you can see here, this is, um, come from a tube and it is really really vibrant. I wouldn't get that colour if I was using that which is 
identical in terms of the name of the colour. They are both vermilion, but that one is just more pigment. And by way of proving the point, I'm just going to pick up a little bit of this. That is pretty opaque. That one's from the tube. And then a little bit of water just to start the process on that one. You can see the paper through it. And now for my favourite new acquisition. No, it's not Buffalo Bill. It is Ink Tense Pencils. And that's what they look like. Now, I found these pencils a couple of years ago, but I didn't get round to buying any because they're quite expensive. More expensive than buying just a regular watercolour pencil. You can use these on their own to colour things in or you can use them with water because that's what they're really made for and frankly they've got some kind of weird witchy magic in them because they are amazing. There it is just on its own and now a bit of water Wow, that is just amazing. I can't believe how much more colour you get when you just add a bit of water to it. It's really astonishing. That is why they are a bit more expensive. If you'd like further artist tutorials, I have a variety of short courses that will help you. There are real-time sessions looking at painting, drawing and marker pens, among others. And if you're keen on producing your own book, there is a more in-depth course on what you need to know about self-publishing a book with illustrations. That covers making key decisions, how to make layouts and dummy books, rhythm and pacing, as well as several tutorials on illustrating a book and a look at the tech. You can either hop over to my website or join me on Patreon for more information. Go on, give it a go! Well, I hope this has given you some inspiration. I have put some links to the things that I have used in the description box below. These are not sponsored, it's just genuinely my opinion on what I like to use. Next week I will be delving into Jack and his slightly terrifying beanstalk. If it was me, I'd have kept the cow. I'm off to stick a stick insect, so I will see you next week. Nano Nano.